Hi, I am here with Dada Mazilo, who is a South African award-winning choreographer and dancer, and she has wowed audiences and made a huge impact on the world with her style of reimagined dances. She's already taken some classics such as Giselle, Swan Lake and Romeo and Juliet and fused them with traditional and contemporary South African dance style. And now there is a buzz in the air because her latest work, The Sacrifice, is coming to the Lowry this week on the 21st and the 22nd of March. So thank you so much in what must be a really busy time for chatting with us at Manchester Theatres. Oh, thank you for having me. <laughs> thank you. So The Sacrifice, um, obviously it's based around the Stravinsky piece, The Rites of Spring, and um, it was really controversial at its time. I think it even caused a riot um, mm. because it broke lots of traditional music rules. And yeah. obviously there's this idea of a sacrifice. So what can you tell us about your version of the story? What can we expect? So my version of the sacrifice is inspired by Stravinsky's score for the Rite of Spring. Um, but what I wanted to do is I wanted to, to put the narrative into a South African context. Um, and it's also the first time that I'm working with live music. I've never done that before. So that was very challenging and exciting. I've got a keyboard, a voice, um, violin and percussion. So, yeah, I mean, it, it's been just a learning curve for me. And I, what I'm doing with the sacrifice as well is I'm fusing contemporary dance with um, a dance from Botswana, which is Twana dance. Um, and that's the dance from my heritage, which I've never learned before. So I had to learn it, uh, well, I wanted to learn it um, for the sacrifice. So I spent three months um, with the Twana dance teacher. And then when the company came through, then we spent uh, a month uh, learning um, with, the, with the professional teacher because I didn't want to give uh, the dancers uh, the information secondhand, you know, mm. so it was very important for us to to learn it with, yeah, the person that really, really knows what he's doing. Yeah, but, um, and so speaking of the Botswana dance, from my very limited understanding of it is that it's it's really rhythmical and it's very expressive um, and it, it it kind of is it something to do with animals as well? Is yeah. that right? Yeah. Yeah. So Twana Dance is inspired by very small, very fast animals and the meerkat being uh, okay. the one. Um, so they let lots of references um in the movement that uh, refer to to the meerkat. But yeah, it's very rhythmical. And um for me, that is also why I wanted to to do the sacrifice because I wanted to see what would happen um with the rhythms and the rituals and you know, culture and tradition and all. All of that and uh, so that's why the Stravinsky was an in inspiration so what I did is that I got the musicians to listen to the Stravinsky score and um, which blew their mind and then I said to them so just to get inspired from that and that's how the music was created really. So did you have to so you've kind of said a little bit there but because you've learned this style of dance yourself and then like you say, there are very specific rhythms and things to, to do with it. Did you have to kind of work with the composer at all and, and kind of say, no, that's not going to work, or actually we need a little bit here? How, how did you have to collaborate? How? Um, we collaborated. I mean, we had to, you know, because that was the first time for me and first time for them. So um, how we'd work is that I would create um, a movement phrase and then show it to them and then they would react to that and vice versa. So then we would listen that come up with something and then I I would have to react. So it was very interactive. Um, uh, it was great. I mean, I think that we all grew and learned so much um, from each other, um, but also it was very organic, you know, yes. but uh, we all like a little family. So, <laughs> uh, and I also try to find some humor in the music, you know, because I mean, the Rite of Spring is really a very thin narrative, you know, mm -hmm. so I'm, I'm wanting to play around with the idea of discordance and just finding moments where um, the dancers stop the musicians and then we get them to start again, you know, so they, yeah, it was, it was fun. Uh, not easy, but fun. Is it something you do again, do you think, doing it that way with original music? Uh, definitely, because I, I just find that it's it's so much better. Uh, it's better than push and play. You know, it's better than working. Yeah. <laughs> um, because then you can in interact and you can have discussions and um, we all feel if something is not working. Um, and then when something is working, then we are all on board. So that was great. 
And you, you've mentioned, obviously, it's been like a real family because of the way that you've worked. And um, I think there's a real authenticity as well, because obviously the, the musicians, the dancers, everybody involved is South African. Mm -hmm. So it's created this incredible platform to be able to share the culture, the traditions to, to the world. Um, I mean, is that something that's been really, really special and important to you? I mean, I think it's very, very important um, because we're sharing our, our cultures and traditions and uh, rituals with the world. And uh, I mean, some of those rituals are things that are very sacred uh, and some of them we can't put on stage, really. Uh, so we've had to or I've had to find a way of, of not making anything vulgar and not disrespecting the culture. Um, but to be able to share that with people. And I think that um, at the end of it all, we all speak one language somehow, because I mean, if you can make people feel and laugh and uh, cry and uh, you don't you don't have to say anything, it's just, it's, it's about the expression and the emotion that you're trying to get out there. And I think that what I am loving about this is that people are feeling and uh, grieving and healing as well, yeah. Yeah, and because the, the title, The Sacrifice, it, mm -hmm. it, it sounds like really powerful, but act, and, and it kind of could give this impression of surrender. But from from my understanding, it's it's almost like you, you're kind of looking at it through a slightly different lens in that you're looking at acceptance and traditions. And as you've said, the way that um, healing rituals can bring community together, is that fair? Yes, so that is fair. Yeah. Because what I wanted to do, I mean, in, in the Rite of Spring, the maiden dances herself or the chosen one dances herself to death. So I wanted to have the sacrifice be something that is a little bit more sacred and pure. Um, and so um, in the second, second part of the work, which I call the sacrifice. So um, the first part is inspired by the adoration of the earth. So that's the community preparing for the sacrifice and then the sacrifice happens. And um she is sacrificed by her mother. Um, yeah, and that inspiration of the, the sacrifice by the mother came from the Pieta. So, yeah, and, and I thought that it would be because we come from women, uh, that there would be something very beautiful and, and special about it. Mm -hmm. um, so then it's, it doesn't become a sad, I mean, it, it is sad, but it's not violent. Yeah, it's meaningful. Yeah, yeah. So it's become this this way of reimagining classic works has almost become your trademark now. How did you get into that from like every different direction you could have gone with choreography? How <laughs> how have you fallen into this? Well, firstly, I choreographed by default or I started <laughs> because I went to the performing arts and training studios in Brussels and I my interest was in dance. That was all I was interested in, but they forced us to choreograph. So then when I started choreographing, I thought I, I want to work with narrative, um, but there weren't really any choreographers that were doing that. So um, I started off with Macbeth and then it was Romeo and Juliet and then Connor and Swan Lake. Um, but yeah, I think I just, I prefer working with the narrative. I think it's it's better to tell stories than just being, uh, making dance movements, so abstract dance. I don't like abstract dance. So um, yeah. I love, I love um, sto storytelling because I think that it, um, it makes you think and it keeps you on your toes. And uh, I know that so many people have seen uh, these classics and uh, there have been so many different versions of them made. Uh, so I have to know what my story is. <laughs> <laughs> you know, <laughs> I can't get away with anything. So I need to make it clear. And also I love to know um, that the, the audience understands um, the narrative. I don't like it when when I leave the theatre and I don't know what happened there. So I try and make it very, very straightforward and very clear. Yeah, and I think dance and movement, it's its a universal language, isn't it? It's such a brilliant way to be able to to get that narrative across. So I think it's its just so clever. And was the, how do you choose your pieces? Like, for instance, this one, The Rites of Spring, what, what chose you, what, um, what drew you to that story to want to reimagine it? Or we tell it rather. Yeah, it's weird because um, I always get myself into this position where I'll be talking to someone and they'll go, um, "What are you going to do next?" And I'll go, "Oh, Giselle." And then the next thing is like, "Oh, okay, it's being programmed." I'm like, uh, I was joking. <laughs> <laughs> So that's really how it happens. But um, with the sacrifice, I really wanted to explore the Stravinsky score because 
I, I love complex rhythms, but this one was really way out of my league because it's so difficult. And um, so what I did is I started with a 20 minute version using some of the Stravinsky score. Uh, I called it Spring. Um, and then from there, I thought, okay, I, I think I can do it, you know, and I, I always say that if I think that something is impossible, then I have to make it possible. So, <laughs> yeah, so yeah, that's that's how it happens. I, I, do, I always seem to find the most difficult things, though, <laughs> the most difficult narrative music, um, but it's good. It keeps me on my toes. And that's what makes your work stand out and, and have this absolute defined place in, in the performing arts world. So it's, it's incredible. Um, and the, the way that this piece works with the dancers, the musicians, the storytelling, the singer, it, it, it's like this ebb and flow. It is this conversation. It is this language. And they kind of all rely on each other. So even though you might think, oh, it's a dance show, because it is, but but it's, it wouldn't work without the other elements either. Yeah. Um, and we've mentioned that. We've mentioned, obviously, the Botswana dance and the, the idea of um, traditions and rituals. What is it that you would, your overriding sort of feeling, what would you love audiences to take from this? Um, I mean, I think, as I said earlier, I would love them to feel, I, mm -hmm. I would love them to grieve because I feel as if uh, people are not grieving enough. We've got so much, we're holding on to so many things. So I'd like people to to grieve and to heal, um, but also to to enjoy a different uh, dance language and to enjoy the music because um, we all love the music. And uh, yeah, we all enjoy uh, what we're doing on stage, you know, so it's a, it's a joint effort and um, it's so great to be able to then share it with, with other people people to share the audience yeah, yeah it's really from what you said there it is it's really cathartic isn't it like you say to be it's it's a way of expressing and releasing your own emotions so that even if you've not necessarily experienced having mm. to you know do sacrifice in it in any in such a large way there will be ways that people can relate within their own life definitely yeah so um, what you've mentioned it there. So I'm going to see if we can sort of what's next. Do we know what might be next? <laughs> He's done put me in that position. Uh, uh, I think I just want to uh, stay with the sacrifice for a while yeah. uh, because I think that there's a lot of growing um, for it um, and, and for us as performers. And I think because of uh, COVID, you know, we it was stop and start, stop and start. So I think that now we're really finally settling into what it is. And I just want to see the growth of that. And I think we all do um, yeah. see where we can take it next and how it's going to develop Yeah. Yeah, and with obviously this one is with the Botswana and um, dance that you've mentioned. So, um, what other sort of traditional um, South African dance styles have you not yet maybe done that you would love to sort of incorporate into a piece? Sure, it's weird with uh, South Africa because we kind of grow up learning everything. And um, so there's Zulu dance, there's Tosa dance, there's Swana dance. And so as a kid, you just you just learn everything. So, um, I mean, it's secondhand, but you, we still sort of know uh, <laughs> every dance pretty much, uh, or we know of it. Um, but what, what I really loved, though, is um, or loved was learning flamenco. Oh. That for me was very special uh, because I, I kind of felt like it because when I was at school, we did Spanish dance, but Spanish dance is very different from flamenco. I love the passion of, of flamenco and how it's so visceral. So, yeah. Yeah. yeah so I want to maybe carry on more with that. And, yeah. Uh, oh, I mean, the African dance is, is there. I've done it. Um, yeah. I mean, it'd be a bit silly to be African, <laughs> to learn some African dance. Yeah. 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 Oh, exciting, exciting. You never know. We might see a flamenco piece in the future. <laughs> well, I, did, I fused, uh, in, in common, I fused contemporary dance with flamenco. Mm. So, yeah. But I think now I just want to learn it just for fun. Yes. Yeah. 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 And why not? Because dance, as well as, like we said, it's expressive, it communicates, but it is just fun as well at the end of the day, isn't yeah. it? It's just yeah. everybody should dance. Everybody should dance. It's <laughs> therapeutic. <laughs> Um, so thank you so much for your time. Is there anything else that you would like to say um, before we let you go? No, I think we've covered everything. You've covered everything. I think we have, haven't we? Yeah, thank you so much, Dada. And 
Just as a reminder, come along to the Lowry this week, the 21st and the 22nd of March to catch the sacrifice. It is going to be beautiful. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you.